Uh, I just got done fin reading this book or looking at this book and uh, I gotta say it's it's really nice. It's a really nice book. It's well worth the money. It's well worth the price if you want it. It's pretty much on sale all the time on Amazon now. You can pick it up for about 15 quid uh, in the UK uh, or Ireland. And yeah, it's beautiful. And I have a few things picked out from it uh, that I specifically want to show you because it um, some things is really interesting. Some things I didn't know about. And uh, there's like a lot of new things in here that I learned about Crash and the development of Crash, especially early on. Lovely little uh, opening cover here. Crash Bandicoot Files, How Willy the Wombat Sparked, Marsupial Mania. A little concept of Crash there. The volume reproduces reference material of the ori that was originally created by Naughty Dog during the development of Crash Bandicoot, nay Willy the Wombat, in 1996. This content has been scanned and printed at the highest possible quality from the best available sources. Dark Horse's goal is to recreate this material as completely and authentically as achievable. So there's something about that that I found really cool and I just thought I'd, I'd uh, include it. Lovely brown, like it's a, such a nice presentation, some lovely brown um, or reddish kind of... It's lovely, it's just a lovely presentation of a book. Uh, but no, it's basically just a Ford by Anne Gant from Jason Rubin telling you what this is about and basically it's about... It's basically a development journal from 1996 that Naughty Dog used when they were making Willy the Wombat or later on to be known as Crash Bandicoot. Uh, here are my notes, you're not meant to see them, but oh well, they're very messy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's, that's basically the pages that I picked out the page numbers I'm going to show you. But uh, this here, uh, I don't know how, how good this looks, but um, this is the journal here that's been scanned in for Willy the Wombat by Naughty Dog. Uh, this is the journal that all these notes were uh, a part of. And, and put in and uh, yeah if you if I put this down here you can see Willy the Wombat kind of sticker here on the side of it. Now here's the first thing I really want to show off. This is the original script for the opening cutscene of uh, the game and this is what they had in in uh, in the uh, this is what they had planned for the uh, the original cutscene of the game. I'm not gonna read through it or will I? I don't know but um I'm just gonna like it's just so interesting. It's very different to what it was and that uh, they had like crashes or Willy's character like completely different at the start um, I'm tempted to read if you'd like me to do a dramatic reading of this tell me in the comments and I will I will do so uh, Here's like the original island layout didn't really change much. Uh, we just have uh, North Sanity Island, South Sanity Island, South Padre Island. I mean, it didn't change much, but there's uh, a few little islands over here that like were cut or whatever, or maybe they were always supposed to be in the background. There's a ship, the sunken ship, which they're going to make into a level. Uh, here's the original level structure, which honestly didn't even change that much. It's uh, basically, basically the same. I mean, levels are changed around here and there, and there's some levels that were removed, and some levels that are added, and some levels that were cut. But overall, like, as you can see here, like really it's uh it's not that different than how it turned out so yeah that's pretty cool 23 here we have the bosses and the descriptions of bosses and the, the, the levels and what order they're going to be in uh an interesting note here is the name uh, of the bosses we have head native Ripperoo, colocon the komodo brothers who were originally going to be in the game but were cut and put in crash 2 later on pinstripe tasmanian tiger who was originally tiny tiger who was caught and put in Jack Jack 2, Crash 2 later on, Needy Brio, which is later changed to Embryo, and the of Cortex, of course, is the final boss. Also, let's have a look at some of the actual uh, levels here. We have Beach 1, Jungle 1, Village 1, Boss 1. Again, yeah, didn't change that much. Underwater 1, we didn't see an underwater level until Crash 3, so they were planning underwater levels very early. Beach 2, Waterfall, uh, there was supposed to be a second beach level. Uh, waterfall, Boss 2, which is for Peru. Jungle 2, Giant Tree. Some of these are so interesting. Boss 3, Cavern 1, Rune City, and Boss 4. Then Underwater 2, another underwater level. Beach Tree, a third beach. We only saw one in the game. Jungle Tree, Rope Bridge. That made it. <laughs> Infamously made it in the Insane Trilogy. Uh, Cavern 2, Boss 5, which was Pinstripe. Uh, Cavern 3, Power Plant, Snowy Mountains. So the dad didn't get added until Jack. <laughs> Shut up, Pete. Boss 6, which was Ty. Or Tiny Tiger, uh, Sewer, uh, Dungeon, Boss 7, Castle Laboratory, and Final Boss. Round goals. Now, this this is another interesting, like, this whole book is fucking interesting. Like, if you're interested in the development of Crash 1, just get it. 
but here we have uh, like the goals and the outlines for a level which is I presume was the first level here and this is what they wanted to uh, get done and get accomplished in the first level. So intention, so A, perspective, third person, three dimensional, they had uh, planned to have 2D and 3D levels. Uh, this is round number one, so this must be the first level. And the intention of this level was to familiarize the player with the main character's movements and basic techniques, to introduce a round of play that allows the player to experience what the gameplay is like, to offer a round of play that is easy to complete, to offer enough energy refreshment to complete the round, to, we'll get to that a bit later on, objective C, to offer a round of play that draws the player into the game, to hook the player with an addictive gameplay so that they desire to continue and readily accept the challenge of the adventure ahead. Uh, D. Movement techniques, all directional movement, jump, bonk. What do they mean by bonk? I don't think a bonk made it into any of the Crash games, so that's really interesting. Um, pick up a coconut and throw a coconut. Again, that didn't make it either. Uh, e. Map design, straightforward and relatively simple, no major jumps or special techniques to master. Again, that was changed because on the separate path of the first level, there is a really tricky uh, jump, a really tricky section. No change in map direction or orientation. Again, that was changed. Uh, round number two, same uh, evolved gameplay, same introduced a special technique called the belly flop wreck. So belly flop was originally supposed to be in Crash 1, didn't make it to Crash 2, and introduced one ground break jump. Whatever that means, I don't know. Uh, round number three, 3D into 2D, so 3 was apparently to turn, like start in 3D and then turn into 2D, which would have been really interesting. They didn't do that until Crash 2 when they would later transition to bonus rounds to some more 2D and then the rest of the level was 3D. Uh, introduce more activity, the C same, so you know, uh, the objective was the same. Introduce the roll disarmor and pick up new items. And E, more complexity to the map design. Here we have more maps, map overview of a level. Um, this is the sunken ship level, which never made it into the game. Here's another map of a waterfall level. All right then, so here we go, page 70. Now this is the concept I actually want to stop in. This is the sewer, a sewer concept. When we all know sewers didn't actually make it into the, the Crash games until Crash 2. And uh, yeah, this looks very reminiscent as to what was in Crash 2 and uh, it's very interesting. I think it's really cool. Oh, here we go. Here's the Cortex Vortex. I just, I just want my favorite concepts in the whole book. This thing just looks amazing. There's what Crash was like tied into. Uh, at the, at the, in the opening cutscene, like just screens all over the place and stuff. And yeah, it's like the, the originally Crash was gonna be like watching all these movies and he'd like incorporate all this quotes and shit from his movies into his character. Um, here's another look at Vortex Vortex. It's so cool. Here we have Dungeon Cells, which I don't know, they just look really cool. Uh, I think this concept is awesome. Like, it looks so gritty and dark and skulls all over the place. I think they did incorporate some of this in Slippery Climb uh, with the cells and all that. But other than that, um, I don't think the rest of the level made it in. I would have loved a full dungeon level that was really dark and gritty. But uh, unfortunately, that didn't make it in. 88, more Cortex Vortex. Oh no, this is actually the Evolvo range. Sorry, well it is. You know, like it's part of Cortex Vortex. Well, it was at least. Um, I think maybe I'm wrong there, but uh, yeah, there's something that like the victim would be tied there, and that would evolve the animals into fucking more uh, superior animals. It's the story is quite fucked up. I'm gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that later on, as you'll see. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Here we have our first color concept, so we're just gonna kinda go through these a bit fast. These are fucking beautiful though. This looks like, I guess, Papu Papu's house outside it, uh, which we didn't see like really fully until Twin Sanity. Here's one I really like. I don't know, there's just something about this that looks really cool. I just love the colors of this and like the, the lighting of it and how, how cool it looks. I don't know, it's, just, it's really cool. And here's a uh, Colacon's arena, I guess. But maybe it was supposed. It was actually supposed to be a, a Donkey Kong style like rail mission where you get in a car and like you jump around and shit in the cart. But uh, that was cut, obviously. And I guess they turned this this concept into the 
uh, Colocon uh, with the cards. Uh, so that um, boss battle. Here we go. Uh, there's th this is really interesting. This is something I really want to focus on here. Willy the Wombat. This is Crash's original bio. Crash's original um, character profile. And uh, yeah, we're gonna. I'm gonna read through all this because this is just really interesting shit. Uh, Willy the Wombat. Willy is the main character of this game. He is a cartoon wombat. He is a powerful animal that stands upright, is dog faced with no chin, and has long arms that reach the floor. Long pointed ears, a prominent do question mark atop his hard head. Willy is a happy go lucky, lovable, gullible, anxious, and totally inept wombat. He is a natural ham actor and loves to play roles. Willy is a bit dazed and confused lately since he is used as a laboratory experiment. Willy is a passionate, warm and endearing and non-stop source of high octane on energy output and most of all, totally comedic. Willy is definitely the one you want on your team no matter what the battle is. It's just... Jesus, this shit is like... So cool. I'm so glad I made this book. This is fucking awesome. Here we have some concepts of animations for Crash. Really cool. But most of these actually made it into the game. Now here, here's his bio. I'm not going to read all this because there's so many of these bios and if I was to read all these I'll be here for fucking two years. But uh, yeah, if you want to read this again you can just pause the video here. I'll zoom in a bit. But uh, that's basically Crash's original bio. And uh, here's a... Um animations that were like that they had planned for crash and uh, there's so many of them like it's so in date you could always tell that naughty dog always like put animations like it's really important of course not all of them made it but still a good amount of them did uh here we go now we have a load of character profiles i'm gonna go through these a bit fast but um here we have uh i'm just gonna read carmen's because actually it's pretty funny carmen who was originally who what which was the original name for tanya um yeah, looks completely the same, just again to change the name, and here is her bio. Girl Wombat, Willie's love interest, beautiful for a woman. Uh, I, 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 I meant Wombat, obviously. Sexy, alluring, Willie can't stand to be away from her. Always touching up makeup, loves to shop, hates the laboratory, doesn't want a CD-ROM to replace her brain, <laughs> and window dressing. And here we have... Wow, Neo Cortex's backstory is so in debt and so like there's so much more to Cortex's character that I didn't know about that I found out in this book that was just so cool. But um, here here's Cortex concepts. Um, he barely he didn't change at all. Cortex they had plans from the start. I think they were quite happy with him. Um, the evil one himself is lurking in the laboratory. Defeat him and you complete your quest. Look at this, look at this bio for Cortex here. This, look at this, two full pages of just fucking bio backstory for Cortex and it's really interesting. Again, I don't want to read this here because we're going to be here for another fucking 30 minutes. But it's so good, I might do a separate video on these. Again, if you want separate videos on these, of me reading these, I will do it because they're so cool. And if you want to hear like more about Cortex's backstory, I will do that. But um, again, yeah, so much. And then Brio as well is also really in depth. Really has a really um, in depth backstory as well. Cortex's right hand man will confront you when you leave the dungeon for entrance into the castle. Defeating Embryo will be tough since he will morph into a bio monster after you think he is defeated. There's the original concept of what he's meant to turn into, which was changed. Uh, again, look at the size of this Brio. Again, if you want it, I'll read it. Here's Papu Papu, who was originally called. Uh, the, the something else, I think it was the tribesman or the chief or something. Um, characters, the henchmen, Ripperoo, Golokon, uh, Kami, Komodo and Kami, Komono, Pinstripe and Tasmanian Tiger. And uh, here's here's Ripperoo. And we found top of the waterfall and must be defeated before entering in the jungle. And here we have Kolokong. Again, look at the bios for these. Every car every um, character had a really rich backstory. It's really cool. Um, Colocon again. Komodo brothers, who basically are unchanged from Crash 2, which is really cool. So they had the Komodo brothers planned to be in Crash Realm, but then actually put Mental Crash 2. And they were supposed to be located at the end of the Runes area, and they must be defeated before proceeding to the next island. Obviously, that didn't happen. 
But yeah, look at how cool this is. And again, the backstory for the Komodo brothers. Awesome. Fucking amazing. I was just reading this as like a Crash Bandicoot fan. It's a wet dream. Like, you get so much more story and so much more backstory in the characters. Here's good old Pinstripe, my favorite boss in the game. And then Tiny Tiger, who didn't make it in until Crash 2 again. And uh, he was called Tasmanian Tiger here. And this is. To, after snowboarding along the snow caps, this enemy is waiting for you at the half pipe. Defeating him will allow entrance to the sewer door. Snowboarding in the game? You what, mate? Um, yeah, they, they were so ambitious with this. And most of the stuff didn't make it into the game, which is a shame, but damn. Um, here's the poor characters. Here, these were supposed to be um, characters that you just met along, like just main like enemies that you jump on and spin or whatever. Uh, Fat Mafia Henchman, he did make, he was in the game once actually at the end of, at the end of, oh I can't think of the level name, but he was, he was there at the end of some level. Tin Henchman, I don't think he made it, maybe he did, I could be wrong there, Gorilla did not. This Running Lizard did though, he was in Sunset Vista. Um, Monkey, I think did make it, yep, again Sunset Vista. Uh, Iguana made it, Hyena did not make it I don't think. Uh, little koala did not make it either. Uh, possum, don't think made it. Crocodile, did the crocodile? I don't think there's a crocodile. No, warthog you stood on. Oh, he's, these are support characters. So yeah, uh, warthog. Yes, you obviously rid them. Shark and hammerhead. No, they did not make it. Uh, not until Crash Three at least. Other are uh, page for other are here, which wasn't included or they didn't have done yet in 1995. Uh, Cortex Castle, which barely changed at all. All right, here we go. Now this is gonna like take up the bulk of the video, I think. Although I've already been here for like 20 minutes, but um, here I have marked some really interesting gameplay mechanics that they uh, originally had uh, intended to put into the game, and there are so many, so many cool ones that were cut. If Willy touches a yin yang yuk, then he collects it and it is stored in his register. Now, what is a yin yang yuk? Well. I don't know yet. We'll find out, I guess. If Willy touches a special flower, then he collects it and his running speed increases until he is damaged. If Willy touches a pepper flower, then he collects it and he can now increase the strength of his attack until he suffers damage. If Willy jumps on a small skull, then it is destroyed and it is stored in a register. If Willy jumps on a large skull, then it is destroyed and he is immediately awarded invincibility for a certain time. Invincibility allows Willy to defeat all enemies and suffer no damage. If Willy touches a stone block, it will be destroyed and a witch doctor will join with, with him. Uh, if he touches more stone blocks while in possession of the witch doctor, then the witch doctor will increase in strength. So I guess this is like nearly thin of the mask. The witch doctor can step up, increase in power up to five steps. If he touches a mask, no, so masks are different here. So if he touches a mask, then then he will wear the mask for the time before a special attack. Uh, if Willy touches a stone block of a different color, it will be destroyed by by it will be destroyed, and a letter will be revealed. That will be held in the register. If Willy defeats 20 enemies, then one up will be released and collected. Like, with this, oh, all of this is completely either scrapped or changed. It's crazy. Uh, you might think they planned. 30. If Willy touches an artifact, he will collect it and a round will end, and a message will appear from Carmen. The artifact will not be collected or stored, so that was really like the, the gate, like to end the level. If Willy touches a scroll, he'll collect it and the round will end, and an FMA will play. If Willy walks into or jumps into water, then he will animate in a swimming position. He will remain in this position until he has left the water. So originally there's going to be swimming in the game. That was never added apart from Crash Tree. If Willy jumps on a vertical lion, then he will grasp it and he will, he will then be able to climb it up and down on it, not in it. If Willy jumps onto a minecart, he will ride the car as it travels. Again, was cut. If Willy is traveling in a direction and then changes to the opposite direction, then he will skid. There's going to be an animation for that. Change of direction only requires one press of the joypad. This is, this is stuff, like this is animation, like um, intricacies that weren't added until Jack and Daxter. So that like it's crazy that they were thinking of this, like even up to then. If Willy jumps and a new jump is required upon landing, then the landing animation will be cancelled and Willy will immediately jump again. Oh, 
I wish. If Willy stands at the edge of the platform for over 60% of his body is beyond the edge of the platform, then Willy will go into a special animation, so kind of like an animation where they're like, oh, I'm falling, like kind of keep his balance. Cool. Uh, of course it wasn't added. Uh, it was actually added in Crash 2 though, so that's that's interesting. They had that plan for Crash 1. If Willy is damaged but he does not die, then a humorous animation will be displayed. Nope. Whenever Willy sees Carmen, his eyes protrude from their sockets and his tongue should hang out of his mouth in a humorous way that picks lust. In, in, if a selectable third button is rapidly and repeatedly pressed in conjunction with the movement of the joypad, then Willy will achieve full speed momentum 30% of the normal time duration. Again, nope. If Willy jumps on a certain object, it will activate a switch, the object will lower to the ground and Willy will drop into an underground area. Wasn't in an, until Crash 2. If Willy is standing directly in front of a ladder and then the up direction is pressed and held, then Willy will proceed to climb the ladder. No ladders in any Crash game. If Willy remains inactive for more than 120 seconds, then lightning will strike him and loss of life will occur. Lightning strikes often on these islands, you know. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm glad I got rid of that, because you imagine how fucking annoying that would be. If Willy jumps and while in the air, but before he lands on an enemy, the jump button is and the jump button is pressed again, then he will position 180 degrees, land on enemy upside down, and proceed to pick up the enemy and slam them into the ground. That is amazing. If that maneuver is executed, then when the enemy is slammed onto the ground, an item may be re released by by this impact. Willy then can collect this item. If the enemy approaches Willy carrying a weapon or other item, Willy can disarm the enemy by performing the following technique. As Willy runs at the enemy, if both jump and action buttons are pressed at exactly the same time, then Willy will slide at the enemy and the enemy will be defeated and the item will fall to the ground and Willy can collect it. The, if the item is a weapon, then Willy will break it and grunt a special audio effects, or he, he will voice a special piece of dialogue such as, Weapon, no good. If Willy jumps at an enemy that is positioned in a tree or other off the ground, then they are defeated by his touch. Kind of reminiscent of Sonic, but that was probably the most interesting part of the book right there, like just reading the gameplay, um, what they had planned for the gameplay, like pretty much 90% of it was cut. Which is crazy, um, but it really goes to show like how, why developers are so secretive when they're making games because they have so much amazing things planned, but most of the stuff doesn't actually make it into the game. Really interesting, really good insight into development there. So if Willy collects a hundred yin yang yuk symbols, then, then when the entire game is completed, a bonus game of Way of the Wombat is rewarded. Here are different collectibles, or uh, yeah, collectibles that were intended for the game. So we have fruit here, and it wasn't just uh, wampa fruit. There was actually like a load of different types of fruits. So we have coconuts, which is laid on the battlefield. If he touches the coconut, he collects it. It disappears from the screen until it's counted. We have mango, strawberry, lime, and pineapple. So yeah, a load of different. I think they just don't. They just changed to wampa fruit just to. Um, simplify it, which I think was probably a right decision. We have small schools, we have large schools, we have talking schools, and we have magic schools. These give you like special abilities apparently. And flowers, we have spring flower, pepper flower, special flower, and cactus flower. In more collectible series, we have a lightning bolt. When collected, it will cause the screen to darken and shower of lightning bolts will rain from the heavens. These lightning bolts will defeat enemies that are on screen. This is a drink that Cortex's henchman would drop that would make Crash more powerful so he'd be able to withstand more than one hit. And uh, then there's also the bubbling red breaker which would shrink Crash by 200%. Here we have some icons that... Oh, there goes my mouse. Uh, here we have some icons which, um, which they had planned for the game. So here we have our stone block, our special flower, our spring flower, our witty face. Which is basically life, I guess. Pepper flower, skull, pineapple, lime, strawberry, coconut, mango, mask, why, 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 why? Secret game pickup. Uh, an enemy, boss enemy. Secrets here. Uh, there's gonna be hidden areas. And more secrets that were to be added. Sound effects weren't added yet. Dialogue voice wasn't added yet. And here, we have the first mention of Crash Bandicoot in this book. Uh, they obviously had changed Crash's name at this point, back to Crash Bandicoot now, which is so much better. And uh, I think this is actually a poem. So, Dr. Cortex is a genius, a mental aberration. He's totally fixated on the world domination. I know what this is from. This is from the, the animation that was made. Of course, so yeah, you can read through that there. Oh, that's, 
Awesome. Uh, here we have a graph, which I don't know actually what it is. Uh, more level designs and a concept of Cortex Castle. And our final concept here. And that's that. That's the book. Now we have some brown pages here. And a repeat of the first few pages. And we are done. That's it. And now we're at the back of the book. Whew. So yeah, that's the book. I highly recommend it if you're a Crash fan. There's some really interesting stuff in here. I cut a lot out of this because otherwise this video will be like 25 million hours. But uh, yeah, I really recommend this book. If you want to buy it, I'll put a link down below for the US and UK Amazons. I should probably get an affiliate link set up or something so I get money from that. But oh well.